We got a battle of the top two head coaches in the National Football League this Sunday as the Patriots and Bill Belichick take on our Chiefs and Big Red, Andy Reid. Let's kind of talk about this matchup a little bit and how the Chiefs could potentially take the one seed still as the Ravens and Dolphins are ahead of them in the AFC rankings. We appreciate you taking some time out of your day here on the Chiefs Report. I'm your host, Jay Sanderson. Let's start talking about the GOAT coach because who is it? Is it Bill Belichick? Is it Andy Reid? Is it someone else? Well, let's kind of talk about these two because they're the ones that are currently in that talk as of, well, still coaching. So both Andy Reid and Bill Belichick have had amazing careers, but let's kind of look at them in a little more of a deep dive situation here. Now, first, their record, Bill Belichick does have a little more wins, a little more losses as well, as he's sitting at 331 to 174. Andy Reid, 277, 159, and a tie. Kind of surprising there. A lot of ties that you don't really see much, but Andy Reid has one. And I guess here's the thing that we have to start with is, Yes, Bill Belichick has more wins. He also has more losses. But I think there is something to be said that Andy Reid is kind of into his prime in a coaching sense because he has Patrick Mahomes. I mean, he's going to get more wins throughout the next couple of years. And I kind of heard Travis Kelsey talk about it earlier this year as Andy Reid became the winningest head coach in Kansas City history. Well, Travis was like, forget Kansas City history. We got to get him to number one all time on the NFL coaching list. So the Chiefs believe in him, and they're going to keep kind of push this win column up and hopefully keep the losses down for Andy Reid. But I do have to ask the question because I think it's interesting and maybe something that we could agree on, maybe something we don't agree on, but something for discussion for sure. Who is the GOAT coach in the National Football League? If it's Andy Reid, then I want you to type AR. If you think it's Bill Belichick, think he still has the edge as of now, then I want you to type BB. Let me know if you got Big Red or Bill Belichick in the comments section below. AR for Reid, BB for Belichick. This matchup consists of two very different teams. And I got to be quite honest with you, this team, or rather this game, was supposed to be played on Monday night because it was the battle of big head coaches, it's Patriots, Chiefs, it's the two dynasties of the past 20 years. But unfortunately, well, yeah, that's not a good record for the Patriots. So that got flexed out on Monday night, and now they play at noon on the Central Time, 1 p.m. on the East Coast in Gillette Stadium. Now, these teams have had very different stories this year. I think for the Patriots, it's been... The lack of a quarterback. Mac Jones has been a kind of up and down cycle. They've had Bailey Zappi start. Now he's been named the official starter over Mac Jones. They've had Malik Cunningham, who they thought they were going to play. Now they lost him to the Ravens. There's been a lot of ups and downs with pretty much every single part of their roster. Now the Chiefs, on the other hand, they've been just trying to figure out little things. Their roster is there for the most part, but they just need to figure out the minute details, the offsides, the drop passes, the simple, small things that they just continue to mess up on that ultimately – Guess what? Leads to a loss where you unfortunately have five of them now when you probably expect at this point to be around maybe 10 and 3, or at worst, 9 and 4. Instead, you're 8 and 5. Now, there is one player in particular I think we have to look out for, and that is Juju, because he's making his first appearance against the Chiefs since signing with the Patriots in the offseason. Kind of interesting there is he was, I'm not going to say great with the Chiefs, but there is clear that there's a very different season for Juju Smith Schuster. Now, the targets are a little bit down, obviously. Patrick Mahomes to Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi is a little bit different. The reception, 78 to 29. And the yardage, 933 to 260, three touchdowns to one, 12 on the average, 16 games obviously for the Chiefs, so kind of have to see how he finishes out the rest of the season. But if you look at these stats and you look on the left and see the Patriots, look on the right and see the Chiefs, you have to know that Mahomes makes a difference. Like, obviously, Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi aren't going to be the best, and maybe if you had like a a mid quarterback, like like maybe Derek Carr, maybe they'd be around that area. But if you have somebody who's lower, they're going to go lower. Like even you have Patrick Mahomes, that's going to go higher. It's very clear that Mahomes can clearly come in here and say, listen, I know how to make wide receivers better, and he's proven it now with Juju. Now there was that whole thing with his knees exploding at the beginning of the year. Don't know what that was about, but we digress. He's still playing at this time, so kind of funny. The QB battle Sunday is kind of funny. Because uh, there's Patrick Mahomes, and then there's Bailey Zappi. There's obviously a difference in these two. Um, <laughs> Patrick Mahomes to Bailey Zappi is a little bit different. You have a guy who's won an MVP, who's a top quarterback in the NFL, and Bailey Zappi, who most likely will be a backup next year to probably Drake May, indeed, I guess, with the Patriots. So very funny to see this on paper, but it's kind of like this season has been there's just been a lot of interesting quarterback matchups. I mean, Josh Dobbs was one of the better quarterbacks for three weeks in this league. It makes no sense what's happening this year in the NFL. Injuries, it's a crazy thing, crazy thing. 
I will tell you what, though, it makes it easier to kind of put some prize picks entries down, which you can do with me. I've got my two already entered in for Sunday. I've got more on Patrick Mahomes than the 259 and a half passing yards. I'm going more. I think he'll get around 260, 270. So I think I may be cutting it close, but I got the more on that. And then Ezekiel Elliott, I have the more on his rushing yards as well. It's going to be a colder game, so I'm thinking Ezekiel will, let's just say, let Zeke eat. Now, if you want to check out prize picks, you can use our code CLNS by going to prizepicks.com slash DLNS. And you can get a first deposit match of up to $100. Now, Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America, and they're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. Plus, there's something new from Prize Picks. You can actually make it easier or harder to win, as you can win up to 100 times your money with Demon Picks. Demons are a little wild, they're statistically harder to win, but the entry qualifies for higher payouts up to 100 times your money. Or you could go with a Goblin when Goblins love green, they're statistically easier to win but come with a little lower pale. So go check those new things out at Prize Picks. I actually looked them up this morning. They're freaking cool. So make sure you go check them out. And again, prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use that code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types. So it makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. You see that code in the bottom of your screen. We're also going to put it in the description. Shout out to Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. Big game. What do we think of this? I mean, I know it's not exactly what you expect from a Chiefs versus Patriots game, but there is still a lot to talk about. Now, this was supposed to be on Monday night, like I mentioned, with big implications. You have Andy Reid. You have Bill Belichick. You have a Patriots team who maybe wasn't going to be the best, but they weren't going to be 3-10, and 10, but that's not the way it went. There is still some implications, though, for the Chiefs that need to be looked at. The AFC playoff picture as we stand right now, well, it looks a little bit like this. You have the Dolphins, one game ahead of the Chiefs, and then the Ravens atop the AFC two games and then you kind of got everybody else in the rear of your mirror as of right now a lot of eight and five a lot of seven and six teams all kind of bundling up here as we head into the final four weeks so you see that here let's kind of talk scenarios on how the Chiefs could still attain that number one pick in the AFC because as much as people want to say it's not a po not possible anymore it's not just possible I think there's actually more likelihood to it than people are giving it credit Let's first look at the top of the AFC in the Ravens. Now, now they have four games left. They've got the Week 15 matchup against the Jaguars on Sunday Night Football this upcoming Sunday. Then they got the Niners on Monday Night Football, then the Dolphins, and the Steelers. Now, when I look at this schedule, I'm thinking, okay, this is a pretty hard schedule, but you need two losses in four games for a team who has uh, really not done that all year. In fact, they've been really, really good. So how exactly does this work? Well, if they lose Sunday night against the Jaguars, you're pretty good because then they can lose to the Niners the next week. Boom, there's two losses. Or maybe they could lose to the Dolphins, which leads us into the Dolphins schedule because they also need to lose one game in their final games. We got a big saving grace. Thank you to Will Levis and the Titans for beating them on Monday Night Football. And now you have these four games where you need one loss. And I don't know about you, the Jets, maybe not so much, but Cowboys, Ravens, Bills looks pretty grimacing concerning we, what we just saw from the Bills and overall, their offensive presence on the field. I think the ideal situation here is you have the Ravens lose to both the Jaguars, and then they lose to the Dolphins. Now, the biggest thing, though, is you have to win out, because if you can control what you can control, then there's a shot that you could be able to sneak into that number one seat. But there's a lot of ways that could happen. I mean, two losses from the Ravens, they're placing three hard teams. You can argue the Steelers could be a tough competition, too, as well at the end of the season. The Dolphins face three hard teams. You need one loss. If the Dolphins could beat the Ravens and lose to the Cowboys, then you just need one loss from the Ravens aside from that game. And given they play the Jaguars and 49ers both on prime time, well, we know who to be rooting for in those games. You also know who you're rooting for in this Sunday's game, so let me know who you got with the Chiefs taking on the Patriots in Foxborough. Gillette Stadium, let me know. KC for the Chiefs, NE for the Patriots. Get down in the comment section. I want to see 1,000 KCs down there because we all know the Chiefs got this one covered. The Chiefs' final four games are ahead. And on paper, they look like the cakewalk of the NFL. The Patriots, who have three wins. The Raiders, who are starting Aiden O'Connell still. The Bengals, who had Jake Browning. And, I mean, he was injured last week, and he's back now. But we'll have to see what exactly that goes. And the Chargers, who are without Justin Herbert, the only guy who really made that team run. They have Easton Stick for the rest of the season. Just don't mess up, guys. These four games are one of the easiest stretches of the entire season. Go out there and win all four of these, 
And you should be in a good position to potentially get that number one slot still. I think, to be honest, this may be a little bit of an over percentage, but if you look at the schedules of the Ravens and you look at the schedules of the Dolphins, I would honestly say there's still a probably, I'd say a 35% chance for the Chiefs to attain that number one seat. Like I said, there's a lot of hard scheduled games ahead for both the Ravens and the Dolphins. The playoff picture is right in front of you. There's four games left, but you're only two games back. The 10 and three Ravens are the ones that you just have to watch every single week. The big thing though, and I think I don't want to talk about it, but I am. If you lose one of these four games, you will be tied with Denver. You split the season series with them. Now, I don't know the exact tiebreaker. I haven't looked at it just yet because I hope I don't have to, but there is a chance that you could actually lose the division. You don't want that to happen. And I think that's where it gets a little bit tough as you have to kind of look at basically not losing the AFC West. But you also can still worry about winning the AFC and being the number one seed and getting that five. Either way, here's the good news. You win those last four games, you go into the playoffs either with a first round bye or you're number two probably, and you're feeling confident heading into the playoffs. So just win out, and no matter what, you're probably in a good situation heading into the postseason. Speaking of the Sunday's game, though, make sure you join us for our live watch party, Chiefs versus Patriots. We're going to be live around 11 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, as we'll have the coverage for you watching the game, doing the live watch by me and Sam, hanging out with you all Sunday afternoon, having some drinks, kicking back, watching the Chiefs hopefully beat up on Bill Belichick Patriots. So make sure you subscribe. We appreciate you watching today's video. And as always, Chiefs Kingdom, we'll see you on Sunday. And peace out.